Good evening. Thank Paris. you very much for coming here. Um, everyone's talking about uh, COVID-19 again, especially because part, uh, at least one uh, city in Sri Lanka, in the, the police area of uh, Gampa, is subject to curfew. Um, a uh, large business there um, had found a significant number. What went wrong? How come this, you know, every business, a any place you go, you have the uh, now almost normal uh, water, soap, sanitizers, masks, temperature checking. What went wrong, do you think? How come this was missed? Yes, I mean, it's a very important question because as a country, Sri Lanka has been doing very well compared to many other countries and uh, there were the government approaches and the health sector and all the good practices were there and the number of patients were actually going down and during last two months there weren't any patients that was found from the community so uh, where it went wrong probably while the situation was slowly stabilizing the, the required amount of say alertness got little relaxed right however i don't think we can blame any person any party or general public right. because uh, this relaxation the relaxed attitude was observed at all levels at this, all this, sectors this laxity general 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 laxity was there however the, the situation actually called for more maintained and sustained approach what we call the new normal. New normal is what we call that once in this kind of pandemic, you can't go back to the previous behaviors. Right. Because these kind of pandemics tend to last long. This is like running a marathon. I think if you could remember the discussion that we had in, in, a in April. April. Yes. Yeah. We, at that time also we discussed that this is going to last long. So we had to adapt to this situation. And generally the country was doing well. But the situation called for a maintained approach of those good practices like the good health practices behaviors all these things what was required was the new behavior to be established right but what was observed was it has gradually got laxed mm -hmm. maybe due to many reasons actually in, in many countries in the history also if you take the history in after many pandemics this happens initially there is alertness yeah. but as goes time goes on the relaxed attitude sets in. That's the human nature. It happens. So I don't think we can blame anyone, no. but I think this time to rethink and re-establish that pattern and find out where we have gone wrong. Um, the, uh, the, the, the suggestion um, or the requirement to maintain social distancing um, seems to have gone out of the window. Uh, I've noticed on every morning the commuter train coming from the south into Colombo it's uh, the people are packed rather like in sardines and quite often you see a number of people not even wearing a mask but what's the point because even if you did wear the mask it's you know they're packed together literally face to face uh, really like that and uh, if you ask some of these commuters they'll say well we don't want to get to work late but the uh, we don't see any move to increase the frequency and the capacity of trains so instead of having one and then the next one 10 minutes later maybe or 20 minutes later you need to have one back to back so that the people can spread out and and not be so clustered uh, what, what do you have to say about about the state of public transport where it is run by the state yeah i mean i think there are no easy answers there because even if you leave out the covid 19 uh, a decent public transport is a must even if you take the current traffic congestion or even the road traffic accidents and the number of deaths due to that i mean uh, for all these uh, defi one definite answer is a good public transport system and uh, answer to your question related to COVID-19. This shows that uh, there is no one measure that would be 
effective in controlling because when you take the realities of the context there may be certain situation that maintaining the one meter or two meters distance is impossible so that is why we need to go for multiple approaches i mean there are simple public health approaches that were prescribed mm. and as uh, considered as very effective in uh, in controlling this situation for example covering your mouth and nose with mm. a the mask in a proper way mm. and then proper hand washing uh, ideal with soap and water or if not with the alcohol sanitizer and maintaining physical distancing actually all these things are based on science mm. because it based on what is known about the corona virus uh, which is uh, susceptible to soap and water because it's covered with this small uh, virus is covered with say uh, lipid layer so it dissolves in soap and water or alcohol sanitizers and also again research has shown that this spread is mainly through droplets infected droplets and when someone sneezes the the wave can the droplets can move in a very fast rapid velocities for about 1 to 2 meters distance so mm -hmm. based on those principles that's how these these uh, basic very simple public health measures came up in in contexts like ours where the facilities are minimal yeah. i think it's very important to go for a range of approaches yes mm -hmm. public uh, transport yes i mean definitely we have to probably you, you might have even missed a golden opportunity during the lockdown period we are the the uh, the amount of usage of public transport or the amount of say the requirement was minimal this could have been a time period where we could have experimented with a decent system of public transport mm -hmm. established but with the with the current demand it's very difficult to maintain a distance. So we, we appear to have missed an opportunity. Probably, probably we appear to have missed an mm. opportunity. But yeah, of course, so. it's never too late to start. Never too late. Never so too listen late. up there, uh, the general manager of railways. Uh, you need to listen to this and and try to get your game right. Now then, I want to go back to the uh, to the latest outbreak uh, in uh, big numbers, apparently. Big numbers at this business in uh, based in the. Uh, in the yeah, Gampa 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 district, yes. Now, how come, presumably this business had all the, uh, the new normal items like the water, the soap, um, sanitizers, temperature checks, and then this happens. How do, how do you think, how did they slip through the net? Is it possible to have, uh, to display symptoms and uh, evade the temperature check or the, te the temperature check was uh, showed you normal but you still carry it. It's, it's, it's very possible. I mean, it is possible. It, it is very possible. Uh, this, this shows us one thing. I mean, one, if, if the conditions are there, the conditions for spread are there. I mean, generally, if there are crowded places where a lot of people are they are together in a close confinement, probably ventilation is not ideal in those situations if these situations are there i mean uh, then the spread will be like wildfire i mean this was what was shown in all the clusters that we have seen so far all these were confined areas where there were a lot of people who were living in a close fun confinement mm -hmm. for longer duration that's the ideal condition for the spread so even one or two were there that have been leaked into the community they could have got into these situations and then started this so yeah large numbers yes it's very scary very alarming but it can happen and it is entirely possible that the, the person who was uh, first sort of uh, identified as being positive at that business uh, may well be not responsible for the spread very possible very possible i think this is something that i really want to highlight yeah. in in epidemiology uh, we talk about something called index case Right. That is basically for a particular cluster, uh, the patient or the case which started off, triggers off. And from that patient it goes on to generally one person can spread to about two to four. It can be higher but generally around that and it goes on. So that is, that person is what we call the index case. This patient was the first patient to be detected mm. but may not be the index case. Uh, yeah. Again, to further explain how this patient was detected. Uh, in, in Sri Lanka, if someone is suspected to have 
COVID symptoms, maybe the contact history yeah. and fever and other suggestive symptoms coming in, then uh, COVID testing happens. Mm -hmm. But but there's no way to test everyone who is coming with fever to test for COVID. Because if you take a government hospital, thousands will be coming to the OPD. And then so many others will be admitted to the wards. There's no possibility of testing everyone who is coming with fever for COVID. Mm. However, uh, in Sri Lanka, there's a policy established to randomly screen everyone who gets discharged after being admitted for fever. Right. That is what we call ILI screening, right. influenza-like illness screening. So basically that is even though they may not be tested for COVID because it may not be typical COVID criteria for testing, but still another layer of defense, like another layer of screening before they get discharged, right. that they are screened. So this patient was also was admitted for fever and not tested as COVID at the first instant, but during the screening, it was found out. Mm -hmm. So in a way, this shows something that this, this method has some benefits, mm. that at one point she was missed out, but the second point she was found out. And it was a lucky find because it was because of that, this suspect came up, that the contact tracing started and uh, found out where this person works. And then uh, they are also, they have basically cooperated and then the testing was done and lot of people were found out mm -hmm. and again large numbers initially 70 then going up to over 100 and today about another uh, 300 uh, about another 500 up down totally the whole cluster has gone up to 700 and again one thing that we have to notice is that once you get the virus into your body yeah it takes up to maybe about two weeks few days to two weeks to get the symptoms mm. after infection so and once you have, once the virus is in the body, then only it can be detected by this PCR testing. Right. Because PCR testing can detect the virus particles or the DNA RNA material within the secretions. Mm -hmm. The RNA material convert application method in RT PCR is very complex, time very resource intensive method, and it can find out only if these viral genetic material is available in the secretion of, the, of that person, affected person. Right. So it takes few days. So the fact that all these, uh, this patient as well as others, they were tested within a gap of maybe two to three days and they all became positive. So generally we can safely assume that all of them got the illness during a close time, during a uh, time period of maybe one to two weeks like close time gap. So they basically they got the infection together. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, let's uh, come back to this, uh, Professor Karnatilika, after a short break. Don't go away. After all, this is Newsline Live and we'll be back after this short break. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukdali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. We are in conversation with Professor Indika Karnatilka, President of Sri Lanka Medical Association. And we look forward to receiving your questions via SMS only. Please do 0772-300-305. Our wonderful producer, Harshna, will put it up on the screen for your benefit now. Now then, Doctor, here we go. Uh, professor, sorry. Um, is the government conducting this PCR test efficiently? sufficiently and methodically okay uh, I would use the word rationally there yeah. uh, I, I will explain uh, now there may be a perception that compared to maybe a country like US or UK yeah. where they would be doing the PCR testing in maybe in millions yeah the numbers in Sri Lanka would be low so you might feel that are we doing it adequately is that financial constraint? Okay, there are several reasons. There are logistical reasons and there are scientific reasons also. Logistically, if you take, I mean, this is a very sophisticated and a complex test. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens here is uh, the viral genetic material is, is detected through a very complex testing system 
it's not just taking the thoughts of but after taking it starts for the new special media and then there is a special mechanism where this material is sent through a special machine and several reagents we are through several cycles this viral material genetic material is amplified to an extent that it will be detected through a system that is what we call this positive to do that you need the experience technicians doctors and specialists and the laboratory people and also you need this uh, reagents what we call the test kits mm -hmm. and uh, that's it's a limited number that we have in the country because some of the and why is that is that because of financial constraints or availability constraints what is it uh, some 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 of the some of the materials some of the complex material that are required for these test kits cannot be produced in this country it's a very long uh, elaborated procedure producing that mm -hmm. and the countries that are producing also because of the current pandemic they mainly keep it for themselves ah. so what they are sending to our countries are limited numbers so that is where this rational use is very important and another thing is since we have to use it rationally for example at the moment one might argue why don't you test for everyone in the country yeah. everyone who's having fever that sounds a good idea that sounds a good idea but may not be i mean i'll give one example when someone goes to war you have ammunition yeah when you start on the board go for marching you don't shoot all over the place you don't do it in that war right. i mean it's a it's a targeted way because it's a limited number of resources so it's the same thing applies imagine at the moment there are uh, hundreds of patients if there is a time comes there will be thousands and thousands who are like contacts then they have to be tested they must be tested if we waste our resources right now we will not have the necessary resources when we need it what do we need more do we need more roads right now in this today do we need more highways or do we need more pcr testing kits uh, or do we need more ventilators okay ventilator is a different question i'll i'll come to that yeah. i uh, yeah i mean in summary i think we should stop this situation before we need ventilators right we should control this situation before we need ventilators therefore having pcr testing in a rational way and maybe we might have to upscale that definitely very likely in a rational way is more important than having ventilators because we need to control okay i i'll get back to your question again little bit more in detail about are we doing it adequately or inadequately yeah one good example now this patient was found out yeah imagine this patient was not found out yeah then i mean why all these hundreds of patients are found out at the moment is because we have got one case and then all the contact tracing has started yeah if the system was not there then this patient would have been missed mm. then so in that way this also one evident that this approach has some successes i will give another example that i was mentioned previously compared to say us and sri lanka in sri lanka the number of tests may be limited mm. however having said that in sri lanka if you do 100 covid testing only about 4 or 5 will get positive yeah if you do the same test in uk or us we about the people in 100 people about 30 to 20 will be positive why is it more there because it's they do it in a more targeted way even though outwardly it look be very kind of uh, free and uh, approach to say very relaxed approach to testing mm. it it is much more targeted than what we do much more targeted that's why because only if you do targeted testing then your yield would be more but here it would be the this coverage of scope is much more compared to those countries mm -hmm. but having said that yes there is a need to increase the numbers but in a rational way again people may be asking why can't we do the covid testing in every fewer patient again yeah. practically not possible like i have mentioned per day uh, thousands and thousands of patients are admitted with fever and uh, technically logistically that's not possible then you might argue okay now there is suspect about this being in the community so why can't you randomly screen the whole community hmm it seems a good idea it seems a good idea yeah yeah 
However, the issue lies in the way the way this test is done. This test will detect only the virus genetic material that is available in the body secretions. So if the viral gen genetic material is not there, then it will not be detected. That's why when someone gets this uh, infection in about, about one week's time, it starts appear in the body secretions. At that time, the person starts spreading the disease. And even after the COVID is negative, that means the detectable levels are low, yeah. about another two weeks, yeah. still it's possible that the viral material can appear in the body secretions. Mm -hmm. That's why this two weeks home quarantine regulation came into being. What I'm trying to say is you can be negative today but can be positive tomorrow because it all depends on the detectability of the virus genetic material within the body secretions. So if you do randomly without considering the symptoms then you may be doing some the test on someone who is apparently healthy today, mm -hmm. not excreting the material so and will be uh, tested negative. But tomorrow that person will be positive. So yeah. we will be missing out on that person. And that person will have all the confidence because the test was done. But will be spreading. Mm -hmm. But if you do targeted testing, then it's unlikely that you will be missing out. So and I think we should be we should be going we, we should do more testing there. There's no doubt about that. But it should not be carpet testing right. or just random testing. But it should be targeted testing. Right. That, that is what's happening at the moment. And um, the uh, the question that everybody will want to know uh, is this: How long will this pandemic last? Okay. Yeah. Again, I would say. The same as I have given you about six months ago yeah. is going to last long. I mean, it doesn't seem to be going away in a hurry. So we should be prepared for a marathon, right. not, not 220. It's, it's going to last a long time. Well, Doctor, uh, unfortunately, we've uh, run out of time. I know that it uh, we started late, but what to do? You know, we uh, we it's time for the prime time news now. Uh, Professor Indika Karnatilka, thank you very much indeed for popping by. The message is, don't be lax. Take care, have a wonderful evening ahead of you, and as always, God bless each and every one of you.